Welcome to r slash Tales from Retail, where we share stories of your bosses, employees, or those interesting customers you see daily. And the first story is, I've told you honey, I've already paid. Oh, wait. Hello, I've avoided posting from TFR due to the details of my job being somewhat specific. However, I have to share this, as it's just a little too ridiculous, and I need to get it off my chest. Little background. I work in the truck rental industry. We rent to both consumers and commercial customers. However, most of our business is commercial, so we can have little Fs to give it points when it comes to households yelling at us. As it isn't quite a big deal, as long as we can prove to management that we're correct in the argument and we're civil while they aren't. It's pretty nice. This story happened some months ago. Anyways, we had this woman and her husband rent a vehicle last year, at the end of June, going from Georgia to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. She picked it up out of one of our agent locations. However, this particular agent was not the brightest in the bunch. However, that is not my problem to worry about. When the lady arrived in Oklahoma City, I received a phone call from Oklahoma City explaining that the checkout process hadn't been completed and that they could not check in her unit. Upon further investigation, I realized that our agent had completely forgotten to take payment. They'd gotten a near $1,000 rental completely free and Oklahoma City had just let them go on their merry way. I was in contact with the customer and asked them for paperwork from the rental, and as I told them I believed they hadn't been charged, the wife believed they had been and was very adamant. However, we provided paperwork with the payment and a long-form typical receipt for the transaction itself. She had our paperwork but not a long-form receipt. I passed the info along to a manager to contact corporate and try to get payment. Four months go by and it's now the busy season. We have a lot going on each day and my manager gets a call from customer, henceforth known as man and C respectively who is very irate that she's gotten letters from corporate asking and then demanding for payment. Conversation is as follows. Manager, thank you for calling company. I am manager, how can I assist you today? Customer, hello, I've been getting nasty, nasty letters from you all demanding payment for a rental back in June. I have already paid this rental. Manager, okay, that's certainly interesting. Can I get the number associated with this rental? Customer provides info. Manager, okay, says here you picked up in early July. Customer, no, I picked up in June. I've been telling all of you this for months. I picked up in June. Manager, okay, well, let me see here. Customer, I have been receiving the nastiest certified letters for months. This is going to end and this is going to end now. Manager, well, I don't quite see why these letters would be getting sent to you, but you did pick up early July, right? The contract I have here says you picked up July 7th. Customer, I returned it July 7th. When are you idiots going to get this right? You're going to figure yourself out and get back to me tomorrow. Do you understand? Manager, certainly. Let me just take down your phone number so I can do some research and get some information to you so we can get this cleared up. Customer, you will absolutely take down my number. I overheard this phone call and D, my manager has far more patience than me. So over the next couple days, we figured out that corporate had voided out her contract, thus any hope of getting payment from it, reissued the contract for July, completed the contract and tried to charge payment on a separate receipt. They could do this and just send it to collections. Why, I have no idea. Two days roll by as we're trying to understand what exactly went wrong during this transaction, as my previous experience with this customer I had completely forgotten about. Then I get the phone call. M is me. Me. Company. My name is name. How can I assist you today? Customer. Hi, I was speaking to manager the other day. Are they around? Me. Uh, unfortunately not. They're visiting some customers at the moment. Was this something you think I could assist you with? Customer. Well, my name is Customer. I told manager to call me back two days ago in 24 hours and it has been 48. What have you guys figured out? Me, internally. F, it's her. Me, let me pull up some information from you. Do you have the reservation number? Customer, it's number. Me, okay, so to fill you in, because I have been aware of this situation, it says in our system that you picked up in July. However, customer, I've told you people it was June. When are you going to get basic information correct? Me, ma'am, let me finish. Do not interrupt me. On our end, it looks like the agent failed to take payment, so to get the contract squared away, corporate had to reissue the contract. That's why it appears wrong in our system. Customer, I paid for this rental. You guys are getting all of this wrong. Me, again ma'am, let me finish or we will get nowhere. You did pick up in June, I have no doubt of that. Customer, exactly. Me, anyways, on our end, the agent failed to take payment. That's why the letters you've been getting were requesting payment, because our agent was incompetent enough to forget to take your payment. Customer, I have paid for this. When are you idiots going to figure that out? Your problem is with agent, not me. Me, yes, our problem is with them. However, for an entirely different reason, like forgetting to take your payment and creating this issue. Now, customer, you guys better fix this now. 
I have paid for this rental, and I have the paperwork to prove it. And if you don't stop sending me these nasty letters, I will put your company on blast on every Facebook page imaginable. And I will take this to the president. Me. Of the United States? Silence. Customer. No, you dumb A. The president of your company. Me. Ma'am, if you keep speaking to me in that manner, I will hang up this phone call and this issue will not be resolved. Or, you can let me speak, get this resolved today, and never have to deal with us again. Customer. Fine, but I have cancer. You guys aren't my main concern right now and I have more important things to do. Me. That's fine. Now, do you still have the paperwork for this transaction? Customer. Yes, my husband has it right here. We actually sent it to someone at your company a while back. Husband. We sent it to my name. Customer. Yes, them. Me. What? Huh? Let me take a look. Customer. Judging by the sound of your voice, you're not too impressed. Me. Well, let me just look back through some email chains here. I've got it here. So at the bottom of your paperwork, it says CC off payment. And then at the far right, it says zero dollars and zero cents. And under that, where it says net due, it's still one thousand dollars. Is that correct? Customer. Yes, but like I told you, I have already paid. Me. And do you have the long form receipt with you by any chance? Like when you go to the supermarket and get a big long receipt with everything you purchased? Customer, ruffling around. No, I don't have that. But like I said, we swiped and I have already paid. Me. Well, if that's the case, it should show up on a bank statement. Did you use a credit or debit card? Customer. Credit. Me. Okay, so because the reservation was voided by corporate, it had to be reissued, and the transaction probably did not go through properly. Can you see if they properly charged you or had a hold put on the card? Customer. They would have told me. They're an excellent bank and they would have told me. Me. I understand that. However, I have no payment here. Call your card and verify with them that this transaction took place. And if you can, please provide a copy of the statement where this transaction landed so we can track this. Call them, get back to us if it exists, get a statement and you'll never hear from us again. Customer. Okay, I'll finally get you D people away from me. Me. Looking forward to hearing from you. So, after this call, I take five and go to lunch. I get back from lunch to a happy slash giddy manager and coworker, and they tell me I wouldn't believe what just happened. Apparently, the woman's husband called in about an hour after our call and said, Hello, this is husband. I believe I owe you guys an apology and some money. Apparently, in the background, his wife was yelling, Negotiate! Negotiate! And he was having none of it, and told her to calm down and completely ignored her. Apparently, one of the most chill guys ever. The payment went through on the card and that was that. They paid up, since when they called their card, they finally confirmed that this transaction never processed. And that is how I resolved a four-month-old billing error in two hours. Sort of. I just told them to call their bank. The next story is, I'm not paying for something that wasn't my fault. I work in a small boutique that sells several brands of luggage. Whenever the client's luggage gets damaged, they can bring it here and we ship it back to the brand's repair facility, since they have limited warranty. Let's say they buy X brand, then we send it to X's repair facility. They buy Z brand, then it goes back to Z's repair center. Repair facilities are usually in another state. The process is simple. They bring damaged bag, we fill out a paper detailing what is wrong with it, and the customer's personal info, charge for shipping, and ship it to the brand's repair center. Once the repair facility receives the damaged item, they get in touch with the customer in case they need to charge for a repair. All the store does is ship the bag for the customer, period. The customer is provided with the brand's repair center phone number if they wish to get any updates. With that being said, this is the story. We will call the lady L for lazy. Lazy comes to the store with damaged bag and we do the process mentioned above. She refuses to leave her personal information, address and email, so she just leaves her phone number on the repair sheet. Weeks pass and we receive a letter from X-Repair Facility stating that they couldn't get in contact with the lady since she doesn't pick up the phone and that it is urgent that she gets in touch with them. She has a payment pending and if she doesn't get in touch with them in a few days, they will send back her bag without repairing it. We call and call her and she finally responds. We let her know that she has to get in touch with the repair facility and that it is urgent. We provide her with their phone number. She gives us her email and we email her the letter. Weeks later, we receive another letter from X facility saying she hasn't answered or contacted them and that her payment is due in order to fix her bag. We call her several times and she never responds. We email her the letter. A whole month passes by and her damaged bag arrives in the store. We call the lady and she shows up a whole week later to pick it up. This happens. Lady. Wait, why is my bag not fixed? Me. Since they never received a payment, they did not repair your bag. Lady. What payment? I thought they would fix it for free. That's what a warranty is. Me. Did you contact? Lady. No, 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 no. This is unacceptable. They should have fixed it. This is garbage. I want an answer. Me. On the letter sent you by email, it detailed that you needed to contact them so you can go over your options and so they could explain why the warranty didn't cover. Lady. I thought you guys were going to take care of this. 
I want you to call them and ask them why they didn't repair it. Me. The letter explains that certain parts weren't covered, and they had to get in touch with them to speak about a payment and what was covered. There's a number attached in the letter, so you can contact them. Did you ever get in touch with them? Lady. No, I don't have the time or the patience to be on hold. I thought you guys were taking care of everything. You guys should have called and asked them what was and wasn't covered, then notify me. Then I would have told you what I wanted, and then you notify them. Me, I'm sorry, but the only thing the store does is ship your bag. The customer is responsible for contacting the repair facility if they want to inquire about anything. Lady, but I left the bag here with you guys. I shouldn't have to call them. This is why I left it here. Now because of you guys, they didn't repair it. Me, the store only ships the bag for you and sends them your info. That's it. We let you know several times by email that you had to get in touch with them. Lady, yes, but I wasn't about to call them and be glued to the phone for hours on hold. I just do not have the patience. Lady, Call X brand now and ask them why the warranty didn't cover the bag. Me. Okay, I'll call them so you can speak to them. I dial X brand's repair facility number and hand her the phone. Lady. They won't answer. They'll probably put me on hold. They answer. I proceed to help other customers and all of a sudden I hear Lady getting very heated over the phone. She is arguing with the repair center people. I cannot hear exactly what is being said since I'm helping someone else. I'm done helping the other customer and go back to Lady. The repair place explains to her everything and that they tried to contact her numerous times and did not answer. They tell her to ship the bag again and they will process it again. Lady, I want to send it again, but don't charge me for the shipping. Me, I'm sorry, I can't ship it without charging. Lady, but I'm not about to pay twice for something that wasn't my fault. Me, sorry, but you were notified several times that if you do not contact X facility, they will ship your bag without repairing it. After a long repetitive argument, she finally agrees to ship it herself. She leaves the store with her bag. I can't believe how lazy people are. Like it's your bag and you don't want to contact them? The last story is, the day I pretended to be someone's dad. The owner is a family friend and asked me if I could cover because they were short on staff, so I think this counts on TFR. This takes place in a small convenience store. There wasn't much to do, so I decided to walk around, maybe reorganize misplaced items, when suddenly a kid, maybe 3-4 to four years old, holds my hand. I kind of look around to see if someone lost their kid, and I see a young lady give me a go-on gesture. I'm a bit confused as what she wants me to do, but whatever, I was bored and this kid looked cooler than my friends. So I asked if he liked candy and asked which one he liked. He didn't say anything and just pointed to some gummy worms. Me, that's cool, me too. I like the sour ones because I can make this face, sour face. This made the kid laugh. Boy, I love you daddy, hugs me. To be honest, I freaked out a bit and thought this kid couldn't possibly be mine. As I looked over to the young lady, she started tearing up. Me, I love you too, son. The boy ran back to the lady. The lady walks up to me and hugs me. Lady, I'm so sorry for that, my husband just passed away two days ago. This is the first time I saw him talk since that day. Me, I'm sorry for your loss. Lady, thank you. They proceeded to leave. The boy is waving his gummy worms at me and I do the sour face and he does the same. Thanks for watching, bye.